The history of neuropsychology, the origins of our methods. Some historians trace the origins of neuropsychology to early philosophical ideas, from Socrates, Aristotle, to Descartes. However, other scholars assert that the origins of the development of a field devoted to the behavioral aspects of brain function are rooted in the 19th century. In the early part of the century, anatomist and phrenologist Franz Joseph Gall postulated that the human brain was not a single organ, but assemblage of organs, each of which formed the material substrate of a specific cognitive ability or personality trait. In 1860, Paul Broca made the momentous discovery that speech is mediated by the left hemisphere within the frontal cortex. This region, centered over Broadman Area 44, we call Broca's area. This discovery added a new dimension to the understanding of brain function, that of hemispheric cerebral dominance. In the 1870s, Carl Wernicke identified the part of the brain responsible for receptive speech. And Frisch and Hitzig found that stimulating different parts of the cerebral cortex produce movement in different areas of the body. These early theories led to the rise of the localization view in neuropsychology. By the beginning of the 20th century, detailed maps were available showing the functions of different areas of the brain. The localization theory or domain-specific view refers to the concept that different areas of the brain control different aspects of behavior. The lesion method in neuropsychology was born out of the localization theory. The idea is, if patient cannot do X, then the execution of X must depend on the lesioned area. However, not all scholars agreed with theories of localization. Alternatively, in the early 1800s, Jean-Pierre Florence, a physiologist, after performing ablation experiments on birds and finding that they could still fly, peck, and perform a range of regular behaviors, promoted the idea that one could remove a rather large part of an animal's brain without the animal losing any of its faculties. Florenz argued that the loss of function was a result of the amount of damage rather than the location of the damage. Propagating the principles of equivalence of structure and mass action, he wrote, as long as not too much of the lobes is removed, they may in due time regain the exercise of their functions. Passing certain limits, however, the animal regains them only imperfectly. And passing these new limits, it does not regain them at all. Finally, if one sensation comes back, all comes back. If one faculty reappears, they all reappear. This shows that each of these organs is only a single organ. Florent aimed to counter the popular theory by Gall, phrenology. However, with the discovery of Broca's area, the localization theory was met with no important challenge until the publication of The Brain Mechanisms and Intelligence by Carl Lashley in 1929. Lastly, he ran rats through mazes before and after cortical lesions and found that the amount of impairment was roughly proportional to the extent of cerebral lesion. Specifically, this impairment in maze learning was produced by equal amounts of destruction in any of the principal regions of the cortex. Based on his observation, Lastly extended Florent's idea of the principle of equipotentiality. The rat's cortex functions as a unit in maze learning and no one part of it has special significance. And the law of mass action, the more cortex is available, the more rapid and accurate the learning. Differing from Florence, Lashley postulated that only the more complex functions were not localized. These theories led to the field theory or domain general view in neuropsychology. Shalom swung between localization and field theory. However, other middle ground theories also emerged. As early as the late 1800s, John Hewlin Jackson proposed that the consequences of a cerebral lesion revealed not the function of the damaged area, but the capabilities of the intact portion of the brain. Intact regions may take over functions previously performed by the damaged regions. 
Also, lesions may disrupt the normal functioning of the intact brain region. In 1942, Kurt Goldstein studied psychological processes in neurological patients. He argued that patients could complete the same task in various ways, and that the qualitative aspects of patients' performance might be as important as any quantitative scores. He realized that many tests or tasks could be performed in such a way as to circumvent the patient's disability and result in adequate scores. In the 1950s, Hans Lucas Tuber proposed the theory of double dissociation. Similarly influenced by both localization and field theories, Tuber asserted that when a damaged area results in specific behavioral deficit, this does not rule out the possibility that damage to other regions of the brain are implicated in creating the same deficit. An association between behavior A and brain region 1, a single association, is insufficient. An association between behavior B and brain region 2, with the inverse never being true, was necessary to localize a particular brain region to a specific behavior. In the 1970s, Alexander Luria, considered by some to be the father of modern neuropsychology, proposed, based on case studies of patients with brain damage, the functional systems model. He stated that different areas of the brain are specialized to carry out particular roles, but these specified roles or units are not sufficient on their own to produce a function. Integration is required in this process, whereby different brain modules act in an interdependent manner. Lauria's model continues to have immense influence on neuropsychological methods today. From early philosophical ideas, to phrenology, to the discovery of Broca's area and Wernicke's area, from brain stimulation studies, the emergence of the theory of equipotentiality, law of mass action, the localization theory, field theory, and middle ground theories have had a great influence on neuropsychological methods today. As we explore brain behavior relationships, these are the building blocks of modern neuropsychology.